It is such a pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Brad Spencer. He is a clinical psychologist and also has his MBA. He is a seasoned executive and worked with companies like Mattel. He has consulted many executives and now he has a book to show us all how he's done it. Brad, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very, very much. Oh, we, I'm just so curious, right? <laughs> so uh, for all of our viewers, I have my doctorate in organizational communication with a rhetoric emphasis, which basically means... I try to understand how organizations communicate mm -hmm. and what they do to persuade. And so I find what you're doing so compelling. So can you give us a little bit of um, your background, first of all, and how, how you got to where you are right now? I was going to be a lawyer when I grew up. Mm -hmm. By the way, I speak way too quickly and I mumble because my, because my thoughts are about three sentences ahead of me. So <laughs> slow me down if you need to. I'm told okay, that all we'll the do. time. We'll the, do. Uh, um, I went to school in Michigan, and I was going to be a lawyer when I grew up. I was accepted to the University of Minnesota Law School, but I got interrupted because they taught me in taking a role there in the, in the college in the leadership development program they had. So I spent two years in that, and then ended up not wanting not to live in a small town in Michigan anymore, so I ended up going to, I ended up at Mattel in Los Angeles working in their OD and leadership development mm -hmm. program. Uh, and. They decided that I should get an MBA because they wanted me in marketing rather than leadership development. So they sent me, sent me back in an MBA. And I actually believed that if I was going to consult with business, the issues they faced were financial questions, marketing questions, et cetera. Right. Turns out the issues they faced were interpersonal issues. The problems CEOs and their executives have are interpersonal issues. Long story short, I went back at my PhD in clinical psychology, so I'm a clinician. I don't maintain a therapeutic practice, which if does not mean I don't do therapy, by the way. No, of course. You definitely do the therapy. <laughs> Anyone who coaches yeah. is actually a therapist practicing Absolutely. without a license. At least you have the license. <laughs> yes, yes. That's right. Yeah. So you, do you coach um, specifically CEOs on the... I, I prefer to call it consulting. The reason is that when I grew up, I looked at coaches like John Wooden and other people like that. And they're, they're, John Wooden could actually play basketball. He's an awesome basketball sure. player. He's got some great business quotes, by the way. Oh, yes, but yes. John Wooden's quotes are some of my favorites. Yes. And, uh, and so I can't do the job my, my, my clients can do. I mean, I couldn't do it as, I mean, yes, I do. I coach the CEOs and many senior executives in many industries. But I first, first call it consulting. Because from, from, my, from my place, coaching is something I... I just don't feel comfortable saying I'm a coach. Okay. Sure. Yeah. But consulting is, is also very, um, you know, there's a, the coaching element to consulting, correct? No question, No question about it. Absolutely. Yeah. And how, how exciting to be able to bring all of your background, your academic background, and also your business experience into helping, um, helping CEOs really develop good organizational health. Yes. And I'm sure you're familiar with some of those organizational health structures, and you probably teach them. But um, that is one thing that I found to be very interesting as well as um, both a former CEO and also a chief marketing officer at a very high growth company, those interpersonal issues are the killers. They will make your business or they will kill your business. And so that's one reason I'm so excited to talk to you about this. What do you find are the biggest drivers for either success or failure within an organization on a people standpoint? One of the things I find that makes a distinction in terms of being successful in business as a team versus an individual mm -hmm. is this concept of being straight with people. Yes. And I don't call it candid or don't call it um, honesty because if you want to read an unbelievable value statement, so well written, so well articulated, read the Enron value statement. Okay. Of course, Schilling's still, <laughs> still in jail right. for, we know where for that fraud. Comes yeah. up, right. And it's not, it's not what you say you're going to do, it's what you do. Absolutely. And so I call it straight. Mm -hmm. So, and I define being straight as giving my full experience despite the fact they feel vulnerable. Mm. And one way to say you don't want to hear it. But what you find when you're CMO at a company, chief marketing officer at a company, is you've got to say things people don't want to hear. Mm. It does two things for you, by the way. It speeds, this, it gives you speed to get to the right conclusion, right decision. And as you know, speed is a major issue in the industry today. Mm -hmm. It's a huge either, it's a huge competitive advantage or a competitive disadvantage if you get stuff more quickly. Mm -hmm. The other thing it does is it changes the nature of relationships. Let me, let me say a little bit more about that. So if I'm walking down the hall, I've got a, I've got a speck on my jacket. It's pretty obvious. 
Most people just pass me by and not say anything. Mm-hmm. Not me. <laughs> Lauren would tell I'm you. I'm totally going to stop and take it off. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Mm-hmm. By the way, what kind of person will do that? Well, someone who cares. Someone who cares, That's yes. That's right. And what's interesting, when someone does that, and they may be a total stranger, by the way. Someone who does that and, and takes the time and don't, does not have an agenda, not trying to be one up, one down, et cetera. And people know that then that's going on. You do it in business, say, I just agree with that pricing for the following reasons. No one wants to hear it, by the way. People are kind of going down a path pretty quickly. It changes the nature of the relationship. Mm-hmm. I mean, for some reason, I'm going to have a close relationship with Lauren. Yes. And people don't do it because they're afraid. A lot of things go on. And I've got all kinds of reasons I talk about in the book about why they don't do it. But the reality is, I don't have a training program on how to do it. The reason I don't have a training program on how to do it is because this is choice. Mm-hmm. I'm either going to stop you and say, my gosh, sir, let me, let me point this out, or you're not. Right. And it's a choice we don't make for good reasons, oftentimes, but they're reasons that are false terms of business. They hurt the business. Mm-hmm. And by the way, one of my wife's friends read this book. She's a housewife at Manhattan Beach. She, said, she lived in every word. According to her, and she she changed her behavior with her daughter, who she was having major problems with. She said, "I'm afraid to say this is my daughter." We talked about it. I mm-hmm. gave her some coaching, and as it turns out, she actually deathly afraid went and had a deep dialogue with her daughter about some stuff that was bothering her. She came back in tears. Mm-hmm. The relationship has changed radically for the better. Oh, that's wonderful! I to love. be able to say it out loud. Yeah, yeah and I, I also love when you can take what we think is business acumen and use it in real life. Yeah. We don't charge extra for that, right? <laughs> it's like you can take what I teach in business and you can use it in real life and you can get great benefit and then we know that the information is just true. Yeah, it's interesting because the target audience for this book was young executives on their way up. Mm-hmm. Someone's a CMO wants to be a CEO. That's right. What makes a difference for that? Turns out so many of the notes I get from people are people who are not executives at all mm-hmm. saying this changed me in the following way. And, uh, and that's, as you've pointed out, that's where the real payoff mm-hmm. is for us. How do, I have a question. How do you say things like that that people don't want to hear in a way that it comes across as caring and not critical? And how do you learn how to hear them in that way, too? That's my second question. And my third question is, how do you understand the political environment well enough to know what you can and can't get away with, depending on the culture? So I sent you some slides. Do you have slides, Dave? In terms of the question of, your first question was, how do I communicate effectively to people when it's hard to say? Yes. Let me change from hard to say to hard to hear. Okay. Because the question is, if, when I say this to you, how's your response going to be in my mind's eye? Mm-hmm. Because people are concerned if I'm too straight, I'll be ejected or rejected. Yes. You're never going to talk to me again in your life. Yes. And that's a real fear. Yes. It's almost a human, see, it goes back way, way, way back to the hunter-gatherer times. If you actually got rejected from, from the tribe, you're going to die. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is literally survival message stuff. Yes. So I'm in a, I'm in a meeting, and, and I got somebody who want to say the boss is there. Am I going to risk dying mm-hmm. to say this? Because he doesn't want to hear it. Mm-hmm. And so let's come back to it. So there's stuff that's hard to, hard to hear, stuff that's easy to hear. Mm-hmm. Then we got the question, you asked two questions about skill of the communicator. Mm-hmm. Is a communicator skill or not? Um, we have many, many programs, and I've, we actually have some at our firm that are superior programs to help people become better communicators. You, you spent your life studying that in school. Yes. And persuasion, et cetera. But the question becomes literally, am I a good communicator or a bad communicator? This creates a matrix for me. I love matrixes. <laughs> me too, the two by two. That's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> so the two by two goes... Hard to hear to easy to hear. Got it. Skilled communicator, bad communicator. So if I'm a skilled communicator, but I'm unwilling to talk about the hard stuff, I'll never say this poop in the punch bowl. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I'm an empty suit. Yes, yeah, I'm, de- I'm dealing with stuff that's not important, run willing to be straight about it, but I'm a great communicator. Mm-hmm. In major corporations, those, those people oftentimes get promoted. It's yeah, crazy. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. It's, it's a lot easier to hear. It's a lot easier to be that person, yeah. you know. I've been called a yes man before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. by the way, um, those people get to a certain level and then stop being promoted. Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, and you've got a bad communicator who talks, who's unwilling to talk about the hard stuff. 
um, they shove to sides. They don't get promoted, but they're, they're not like, oh, usually. Nobody notices them. Nobody yeah. notices yeah. them. Mm -hmm. So you got a bad communicator who talks about the hard stuff. Those guys usually get fired as crazy. Mm -hmm. You can see that. They're seen as pain in the butt. Uh, usually don't say butt, but mm -hmm. the pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. It's a family show. And, the, and, and so what happens is that they, they're seen as obstructionists. They oftentimes are, by the way. Mm -hmm. But they're talking about the stuff that needs to be talked about. The question is, how do you reinforce that? Mm -hmm. And get them and get them more skilled communicators, by the way. Right. Then you get good communicators who are going to talk about the hard stuff. Those are people who actually make it to the C-suites. Mm -hmm. And the question is, we got training programs to how to become a better communicator. Mm -hmm. Everyone can become better at that. You know that. Yes. I'm still working on it. My wife tells I'm working on it. <laughs> I am as well. And we believe her. We're all working. We're all works in progress. The question is, how do you make, how do you talk about the hard stuff to hear? Mm -hmm. And I maintain that's a choice. Mm -hmm. It's a choice we have to make, despite the fact we've been told if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. That's right. We've got other things going on in our lives, and we've got a fear that says if I do it, I'll be ejected or rejected. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but it's a choice when you make it. You make it without agenda. Mm -hmm. Decisions happen more quickly, and people tend to change the nature of the relationship dramatically. But I think that goes back to the comment you made earlier was, you have to really care. Um, yes, yeah, so and let me say, you must, sometimes you need to care about the outcome of the goal and not the person. Okay. Mm -hmm. And see, if, 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 I'm, if, if I really want to put a man on the moon, the things you're doing aren't going to help me do that. I get to say so out loud, and I may not care about you at all, mm -hmm. but it's caring about accomplishing the goal in terms right. of the business goal. Mm -hmm. right. And by the way, hopefully I will care about you. That's a different, different dialogue, because that'll make us closer as a team, make mm -hmm. us more trusting. But this is not about trust either. Mm -hmm. This is about what we find, see, the way, way it came about this, I had clients ask me time and time again, Brad, I run a major company, What's, what do you find, you've worked at a lot of companies, what do you find the distinction between great companies and great teams and companies that aren't so great? Mm -hmm. I struggled with years and years about the answer. It was right in front of my face. It's so obvious. They're straight with each other. Mm. And, and when I say it, they say, my gosh, it's so true. How do I do it? And I'm, then, I'm loving it. I'm just eating <laughs> this up. Okay, so just to recap, we've got your matrix. We've got on, on the left-hand side, and for you guys who are the opposite, but on the left-hand side, you've got, well, on the, the x-axis, it's... You're going to have it, it, that's right. have it on the screen, so don't... <laughs> Let me just communicate and recap. Okay? <laughs> We're running long. All right. Okay, so just to recap, you've got not good communicator to good communicator. Yes. On one side. And then, on the, on, then you've got straight and not straight. Yes. And so in your book... What we're talking about is how to become that good communicator and how to become skillfully straight. Is that correct? No. No. Okay. My book is not a how-to book for straight mm. uh, because we all know how to do it. We just don't do it. Mm -hmm. Now you can you can become much better as a communicator, mm -hmm. and this is not. A, I've got some other, some other things I've written on how to become a better communicator, mm -hmm. but there are all kinds of books on there how to do that. Crucial conversation, et cetera, et cetera. But there, there's nothing to really focused on. If you don't do it, this is the outcome. I see. Yeah. Okay. And that's what. And that is what this book is about. Yes, it is. Awesome. And how do we? How how do our viewers um, get access to this book? It's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. On anyway. Amazon straight yeah. line. And so the other, let me say something else by the way quickly. So I'd finally written the book, but I decided that the world did not need another book by a consultant. Mm -hmm. So. I had a client, Ed Monster, CEO at Emerson Electric. Emerson was a $24 billion company. Mm -hmm. And um, so I said to him, Ed, I need someone to write some stuff at the end of every chapter, how this works in practicality. Mm -hmm. He said, I'd be glad to do it. So I've got, he's, not, he's really a co-author in some respects. He's written, this is how it works. Mm -hmm. And this is how it's worked in my company and where it has not worked, by the way. Mm -hmm. He's very, and again, let me come back. My definition is when you're being straight, you're feeling vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And when you read his, his piece, you know he's feeling vulnerable and putting him down. Mm -hmm. But I think he did a great job. And I loved the juxtapositioning yeah. of you bringing 
just the factual information yeah. around what can be done and him showing us yeah. the application. Yeah. And how. And that yeah. made a huge difference. Yeah. I think that's partly why yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed it as much, yeah. because it was such an yeah. applicable yeah. By the way, it's interesting because the, the, the forward is written by a head coach of a professional football team who I, who I coach, I, I consult to. Because leaders need leadership. That's yes. right. Yeah. That's right. And the other thing both of you don't recognize, they think, my gosh, this person is the top, top of the world, the CEO of a company. They don't have any pain. Right. Boy, the, the <laughs> agony, the, uh, you know, the agony you go through when you're sitting in that position, who do you talk to? That's right. It's very and how lonely. how do you express it? Yeah, very, very lonely. Very lonely. And so they can talk to people in my firm, et cetera, myself. And what we talk about very well is what's going on with their children, to what's going on in the business, to what, how, how do they become more effective at talking to the CMO into doing something. And, uh, Just life. It is, it is life. It is life. Yeah. And the fact that we've got a unique expertise in behavioral sciences is helpful. But I oftentimes think that periodically stopping and just talking to someone is just helpful, period, if, as long as they know how to listen. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And we've enjoyed talking to you. And thank, thank you. you so much for being willing to come and talk with us. There's so many more applications, and I wish we had another hour. Um, hopefully you'll come back again and give us some more insight. But thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure. And make sure to go buy this book. It's great for business, and it's great for life. Mm -hmm.